Recently, it was revealed that Valve has been testing out Proton on the 64-bit ARM architecture. Proton was originally intended to allow for Windows games to run on x86 Linux. This was a big deal when it was released in 2018, as it made Linux gaming a lot more viable almost overnight because of its performance as well as its ease of use compared to Wine. Now there's still a lot that we do not know about this project. It may not be around for another year or two, maybe longer. There's also some speculation about Valve creating a cheaper Steam Deck with an ARM chip in it in the future. But who knows if that is true or not. That being said, the fact that Steam and Proton could be coming to modern ARM devices is a big deal. So I want to discuss what this will actually look like for the average gamer who owns a Raspberry Pi 5, or even a 4 for that matter, a modern smartphone, or other devices that could possibly run Steam in the near future. To get started, I'll talk about what this means for Raspberry Pi owners, particularly those of you who own a Pi 4 or 5. If you own a Raspberry Pi 4, you probably won't get that much out of this, besides being able to run some older Windows games from 20 years ago, or some really light indie games. That being said, even that would make a Raspberry Pi 4 a bit more useful from a gaming standpoint, but ultimately that's not where the potential is. I think more potential is going to lie in the Raspberry Pi 5, as well as single board computers that have the RK3588 chips inside of them. These are the best options in the ARM single board computing market right now without breaking the bank. The wild card here is going to be how well does Proton on ARM compare to Box86? How much better is it going to be? Now Box86 on its own can only take games running on OpenGL on x86 machines and make them run on ARM. If you want to run DirectX based Windows games, you need to run Box86 combined with Wine. From what I've seen when doing this, the performance seems to top out currently around early Gen 7 and some indie games. I did see Quake 4 running on a Raspberry Pi 5 at playable frame rates in windowed mode, not even full screen. I also found an article about running Stardew Valley through Steam on the Orange Pi 5 with Box86. That board has the RK3588S chip. It did run well, but the board ran a bit hot and the game only ran in windowed mode and not full screen once again. However, that game has native Linux and OpenGL support, so that one should be a bit easier than a Windows game in that situation. Just keep in mind that there's obviously going to be a bottleneck whenever you're running a compatibility layer on top of a compatibility layer. This was even true to an extent for just one compatibility layer, such as Wine or Proton on x86 machines. There's going to be even more of a bottleneck if you're also running Steam with Box86 and Wine combined. The question for Proton on ARM on these devices once again is going to be, how much more efficient is this than Wine and Box86 together, or just Box86? If it is a lot more efficient, Maybe you'd get something like Quake 4 running in full screen at 60 FPS on a Pi 5. I'm not really sure though to be honest with you. I think the real potential is going to be for future single board computers, such as the Raspberry Pi 6. A next generation board will have a much better CPU and GPU built into it. I think the best case scenario for now is going to be lower end indie games, and Windows games from 20 to 25 years ago, if Proton on ARM came out anytime soon. That being said, this solution would probably make it much easier than using Box86 and Wine, which may be the biggest pro of all in the short term. If you want to run PC games on a single board computer right now, you can always just get something like the Odroid H4. You can run Windows or Linux on it, and for older games, it should run those just fine. It'll even run a lot of indie games, as well as most emulators, perfectly fine. However, to move on, I think there's a much bigger opportunity for Proton on ARM 
on smartphones and tablets. Nowadays, smartphones also run on 64-bit ARM chips. However, mid-tier and high-end Android phones have much better processors than what you would find inside of a Raspberry Pi 5. They've already gotten to the point where an emulator like Dolphin can run just fine. And that wasn't necessarily true six years ago. It's even more true for iPhones and iPads, which have even better processors. Plus, some gamers have already been trying to run Windows games on their Android phones through something known as WinLater, which is in fact based on Box86 and Wine, which I've already talked about. I've seen Skyrim and Dying Light run with this at around 15 to 20 FPS on some modern phones. In some areas, these games dip lower than that. So they're not playable at this point. However, the fact that these games are running at all is quite impressive in my opinion. That would not happen on a Raspberry Pi 5. I'll have links to some benchmark videos in the description below. Not only are these chips in the phones more powerful, you get new phones every year, which means new CPUs and GPUs with better performance. Plus, I wonder if Valve is considering an iOS release for Proton. As alluded to before, Apple's chips are even better than the ones found inside of Android phones, which are made by Qualcomm typically. I think a decent amount of indie games should run fine on phones once Proton on ARM comes out. I still wouldn't expect Gen 8 AAA games to run well, based on what I told you about Skyrim and Dying Light running in Win later, but I would expect a lot more Gen 7 games to be able to run on phones with this than on a Raspberry Pi 5. Plus, you always have the hope of future phones giving you a bump in performance. While phones have strong potential, I think the biggest use case of Proton on ARM could be the Apple Silicon chips. However, there's one problem for Valve in this market. There are already tools for this on modern Macs and they're actually pretty good. Apple already has a very good compatibility layer for translating x86 instructions to ARM called Rosetta. Plus, there's also crossover but you have to pay for that. Yet another good option supposedly is the game porting toolkit which I don't know too much about so I can't comment too much on, but it is supposed to be quite good from what I've read, and that's not even getting into virtual machines being a potential option as well. The performance is already there for these Apple Silicon chips. Even the original M1 chip could run The Witcher 3 at playable frame rates with Rosetta. The M3 Pro chip is even more impressive, being able to run many games from the last few years at good frame rates, not quite locked in at 60 frames a second in every case, but at least above 30 easily. I'll have a link to a benchmark video in the description showing off the performance of this chip. You'll definitely want to see this one, as well as the one for WinLater. It is a night and day difference between WinLater and Rosetta. Unless Valve can outperform all of these solutions that are already available for Mac users, I just don't see much of a use case here. I think Valve should focus on releasing Proton on Windows on ARM instead of macOS. Unlike macOS on Apple Silicon chips, Windows on ARM is desperate for a strong compatibility layer, especially for gaming purposes. Microsoft and Qualcomm have been pushing the latest Windows ARM laptops pretty hard lately because of the new Snapdragon X Elite chips. I think that platform would be a better use case than macOS. But anyways, I think this is an interesting development, especially for the future of ARM. Again, we don't know when this will be ready, and we have heard no official announcements yet from Valve. But I think this will have more of an impact down the road when more powerful phones and ARM-based single-board computers emerge with even better chips than what we have today. If it comes out soon, I don't see much benefit for ARM-based single-board computers like the Pi 4 and the Pi 5, outside of making it a bit easier to play some really old Windows games like the original Half-Life, Morrowind, or the old Unreal Tournament games, like the first one. Recent Android phones and iOS devices could be a great target for this, offering much better performance right now than single-board computers. I do wonder if there is some sort of ARM-based uh, Steam Deck in development but I still don't see that coming anytime soon. I don't think there is an ARM chip out there for cheap enough to manufacture 
that would provide a comparable experience to the current Steam Deck. Ultimately, the best part about this is being able to play PC games on more devices than just our usual desktop PC at this point. This will make ARM more than just a platform for emulation and phone games. This is going to be great for preservation in the long run, because we really don't know how much longer the x86 architecture is going to last. At some point, x86 may be dead, but if we have compatibility layers that work well, then we'll be able to keep classic Windows games alive. And now, I want to know what you think. Do you see any use for Proton on ARM in the near future? Or do you think that this is more of a long-term project like I do? Would you be interested in seeing Steam running on a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi? Or your phone and being able to play your favorite Windows games? Let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.